Uh, let me present myself as a pastor, Arne Kappelgaard, and I'm thankful for the fair way that you try to open the discussion. Although I could, I would like to have uh, heard you understand the context in so many of these places, I will not go into many details, just one. Have you not heard this context of the word, I and the Father is one? That Jesus called and uh, talked to the Jews, try to explain them step by step, slowly, what he is trying to tell them. Because it was so, just as hard for Jews to understand that what he was trying to tell about himself, as it is for you. Because God is one. It took his disciples two and a half years to understand that at the same time he could say, I am both, I am also God, although I am a man. He was human, yes, and God. And when he said, I and the Father is one, the Jews stoned him, wanted to stone him at least. They understood perfectly well that he made claim to be God with these words, just as he did with the words, before Abraham was, I am. Have you not heard this context before? That is actually what I was referring to. You see, the Christian, to me, is reading out of context. What you have given me is the text. John chapter 10, verse 30. That is the text. Context means, please don't waste time. Context means the text that goes with it, before or after. And I have been asking learned Christians, what is the context? English speaking people, what is the context? And nobody seems to understand that simple English of mine. I said, what you quoted is the text. I want the text that goes with it. So they want to open the book. I said, no, 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 please. Keep the book shut. If you know your, what you are talking about, then you ought to know what the context is. What is the context? Yes. Do you know, sir? Look, I don't want to embarrass you, because I know people get embarrassed. I said, what is the context, the, the text that goes with it? Without opening the book as a pastor, sir, you might remember in what sense did he say that? In the sense that he was gradually revealing himself, this was so, what was so hard to understand. Some people they accepted, some rejected and got angry because they understood. And nobody can say, I and the Father is one, without being either a fool or be true. You see, sir, what you are doing now, you are giving an explanation. What I was asking for is the context. Let me give you what I, what I, I explain to what I mean. Context, starting from verse 23, what you quoted was 30. Let's start from 23. That's the context. It reads, and Jesus, if you like to open the book, if you like to have a look at it, 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch. John 10, 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch, meaning in the temple of Jerusalem. He's walking. He's alone. Jesus, not with his disciples, he's alone. Then came the Jews round about him, meaning they surrounded him. Because 
This man Jesus, a mighty messenger of God, he was provoked by the Jews and he, he, he criticized them very, very strongly. He says, you generation of vipers, you white sepulchers, you fools, you wicked and adulterous generation, you brood of snakes. And the Jews were not the people to forgive you for that. We know that they are unforgiving people. So now they have their own time. They have an opportunity. They have an opportunity that here is a man, he's alone, let's give him a good bashing. You know, he's been calling his names. So they surround him and they say, How long does that make us to doubt? If that be the Christ, tell us plainly. Am I right, sir? How long? That means they're brandishing a finger in, the, in his face. He say, How long are you going to make us to doubt? If you are a Christ, tell us plainly, man. In other words, you are talking ambiguously. You are not putting forth your claim clear enough. That's the allegation, the charge. So Jesus says, I told you and you believe not. It's a lie. You are uttering a lie against me that I didn't tell you. I told you and you believe not. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me. And my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. My, verse 28, my father which gave them me is greater than, than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29, verse 30, I and my father are one. That is the context. Meaning that once a person has accepted faith, God sees to it that he remains in faith and I as a teacher, as a master, I see to it that they remain in faith. We are both one in this to see that the man remains in faith. Not in omnipotence, not in omniscience, that he is a... No, we are one in this to see that the man remains in faith. But the Jews were looking for trouble. Look, they were out for a fight. And there is a saying that if you are looking for trouble, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. Am I right, sir? You are looking for trouble and in, in, before the... You can say twinkling on your eye, you are in it. If you are looking for trouble. So the Jews were looking for trouble. So they picked up stones again to stone him. Verse 31. So Jesus says, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou being a man makest thyself a God. That's the context. Yes. What does Jesus say to that? You see, the first false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Correct? That he was not putting for this claim clear enough. He said, you're talking ambiguous. Come on, man, tell us. If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. It means you're not doing it plainly. That's the first false charge. Second charge, you are now blaspheming. You are claiming to be God when you are a man. What is the answer? He says, he says, he says look, if I'm God, I say, I'm God. You say, you Mr. D, that you're the lecturer. I say, yes. Why should I be very good? Why must I beat around the bush? You did that? I said, yes. You are a lecturer of Islam? I said, yes. Why should I start beating around the bush? If I am. So, he said, they say, you are blaspheming. What does Jesus say to that? He says, is it not written in your law? In the Torah. Law, the word law. The law in English, in Hebrew is Torah. Is it not written in your law? In your law is sarcastic. It's also his law. Because he said, Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. It's also his law. But he says, Your law is sarcastic. In other words, you ought to know in your book. Like somebody said, Look it in your Bible, sir. You know, that means in your, in your Bible. Maybe it's also my Bible. But it's your Bible. Have a look. So is it not written in your law? And he quotes from the 82nd Psalm. I said ye are gods. It's a quotation. I said ye are gods. He's quoting from the 82nd Psalm where God speaks to the Jews. He says, behold, ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the quotation. In other words, he's quoting from the 82nd Psalm that this is our language, man. We talk like that. 
The Englishman is talking about the magistrate, the judge. He says, me Lord, me Lord, me Lord, means my Lord, my Lord, my, does he say my God, my God? When he says me Lord, what does he mean? He means, you know, respectable sir, respectable sir, but he's calling Lord, my Lord, my Lord. He's not his Lord, he's not his God. That is your language. In Afrikaans, in Afrikaans, I don't know how close it is to your Danish language, the, the white man's language, they say in Afrikaans, I'm quoting from the book of Isaiah, he says, Ek, Ek is the hero. And that is, Tain Heiland Beiten Meni. I, I am God. The word there is H E R E, here. Here means God, Lord. But it means God in, in the Afrikaans language. Here, H E R E, here. I don't know whether you have something like that in your language. Here. I, I am God and there is no savior besides me. But in Afrikaans the word is here, God, I am God. This word also hot means God and here means Lord meaning God. So now in, in, in South Africa, I don't know Afrikaans as a language, but I go to one of our cities, you look at me brother, 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 brother. I go one of two our cities where this Afrikaans is the predominant language and I go to the toilet and it's written there Dama D-A-M-E, they, they, they pronounce Dama and H-E-R-E to me Dama here I said Dama means ladies here but this door here there's another door there they said no 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 <laughs> this here is not here is here you pronounce here means means gentlemen but in the Bible here means God I said you got toilets for gods in South Africa <laughs> No, this is the genius of the language. Genius of the language. So Jesus is reminding them, is it not written in your law? I say ye are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods unto whom the word of God came in the prophets, are called gods. In the book of Exodus, God speaks to Moses. He says, behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh. Am I quoting correctly, sir? I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Is he God? Is Moses God? But that's what's written there in your Bible, sir. So in other words, this is the genius of our language. We talk like that, but we don't mean that. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he calls them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. The scripture cannot be broken. You can't contradict what I'm telling you. That's what Jesus told the Jews. You can't contradict me, what I'm telling you. Say ye of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world that thou blasphemest because I said I'm the Son of God. In other words, it means nothing, man. Look, if a man is called God, you take no exception to that. Why are you taking exception to me when I say I'm the Son of God? That is what he's telling. Because God has got sons by the tons. By the tons in the Bible. He's got sons by the tons. So this is how he's reasoning. He's, if he was God, he said, look, I am God. So what else can I say? But he said nothing of the kind. In the context, it is not what you understand. Sir. That is why he said, come, let us reason together. You don't have to accept my explanation. But I said, now, nah, give me a hearing. Whatever you have to say, I said, now, nah, I will explain. 